Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about uh, education and technology and innovation as well. How can we uh, employ innovation and technology in order to further enhance the educational process, especially here in Egypt after uh, COVID-19 forced uh, us to stay at home and to adapt with e-learning or distance learning? And uh, many of us were not actually used to using technology, but we started adapting to this uh, uh, new situation and we started the training ourselves and training our children how to use modern technology in, uh, in the educational process and in learning. So in order to know more, we're very much delighted to have with us Dr. Jihan Zahran, a postgraduate uh, uh, professor and innovation edu and education consultant. Thank you very much, Dr. Jihan, You're for coming welcome. today. Now, um, doctor, to start with, uh, I want you to, to, to tell us about your career and uh, uh, what exactly do you do? Because you told me off air, my title is Innovation and Education uh, Consultant. Yes. So I'd like to know more about that. Yeah, all right. Uh, first of all, I'm just um, happy just to be here, education, and uh, talking about this topic specifically, which is the topic of the hour. Yes. Um, now, my field from the beginning till now, it's just for an education completely. I'm starting uh, my career as an English teacher, by the way, faculty mm -hmm. education. And before I start that, I was lucky to, to have in my elementary school uh, some of the teachers that actually create that skills in my, uh, in my character. That they taught me how to do the presentation skills and how to, do, to deliver the information. So from the teaching that, methodology from that time in elementary school, actually, yes. I'm talking about the activities that I was engaged in. Yes, and and that creates for me how to deliver the information in different ways, mm. in different activities. So from that time, I like to deliver the information. When I graduated from the high school, they told me that you have to be a teacher. Mm. So um, in that field, I was graduate from faculty of education till like 14 years after that, working in schools, um, international schools, academic, and starting to have the technology parallel line in that time. Mm. Actually, in that time, it was uh, 1997. Mm. Um, I just uh, having this abroad in Egypt, in the Gulf way. So they started in technology, how to use technology in education. And I was lucky even to have training abroad about that specific topic and sector. Yes. By time, all right, we have in technology most of the things and sectors in education. Starting from um, the research skills that we have to deliver for the teachers. Tell how to use the technology in devices, how to use the internet, how to use researching skills related to what we are having in education. So let's take these one by one. Yeah, <laughs> we actually it's a lot of things detail. if we talk about that, it's, you know, like it's an ocean. Yes. Education and innovation, it's an ocean to talk to. But I'll try and do my best just to summarize what's a little bit things which is important to the audience that you're yes, listening because to us right now. As I mentioned now. earlier, uh, many of us were not actually trained on how to use modern technology, especially the older generation, yeah. uh, in delivering information and receiving information exactly. as well. Perhaps the younger generation are a little bit used to technology, but not in education. They know how to use technology in uh, using social media and daily aspects, but when it comes to education, I, I thought that some of them perhaps had some difficulties again. Using and, and, and that's our problem. That's mm. our issue, by the way, that mm. we didn't make education is fun. Yes. You know? So if we did it, education is fun through some of the things which is really updated right now. Now yes. they are working on it and it is there. But if we all the time just make education is fun, we will do that definitely. But we know that, as you said, uh, students having more technology more than us, yes. okay, and they are updated most of the time. They don't use it in the right way, that's yes. we have to admit that. So, so it's our time now to guide them how to use it in the way that we need them to be in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> if, if we want to use technology in the modern way or yeah. in the appropriate, if I may say, in the appropriate yeah. way, how can we do that? Actually, I started to know that in, um, and when I do just some of the educational uh, companies that I shift to business in education also, mm. like six years ago. 
And that taught me a little bit how to balance this way, how to deliver the information in the technological way. And when I say technology, I don't mean device. Mm. All right, I don't mean uh, it's kind of devices which is without names. But I mean technological way of teaching to research. When I have to, uh, to deliver the information, I have everything online right now. Everything is ready. Everything is really uh, handed to the educators. No need to search a lot. But to search well, mm. this is the, the audience have mm. to know exactly when they teach their daughters and sons how to search in the right way. And that's a sector called researching skills. All right, and, and that we should do be that. actually taught as part of the curriculum at a, a very early age. Definitely, definitely, That's because this is this is the basic. All right, when I just telling uh, because we see two year old playing with uh, with the tablets and, and iPads, it's they easy. know how to do it's it. It's easy to do it. Mm. It's very easy, more than we can imagine. But the way they have to do it, this is the major thing. Mm. We don't well train yet our educators to use that way. And that will come with so many things, so many things, starting with the curricula, starting with the academic training, starting with the technical training, starting to gather them all in all to integrate subjects together with the right application we are doing. So we're talking here about first qualifying the teachers to do that and then know how to do it with our Definitely. students. So uh, yeah. the first uh, step comes with uh, qualifying the teachers. The implementation tool. Mm. The people that will implement your project is the teachers. Yeah. So we have to start with them. They have to know exactly what's going on. They have to know how to deal with separate and different levels of students well. And then to start the plan in the right way. So and then the tools, it's the last thing that we can do. Mm. Okay, but we have to tell them exactly how to deal methodologically. Okay. There is a lot of teaching methodological recently and need to be changed all the time. Traditions, it not, cannot be right now in education. Mm. We have to update ourselves according to the... And we had to. And we had to because of COVID-19 when we stayed at home because of the lockdown, we had to. I mean, we were forced to do that. So uh, some of us had to train themselves on, on how to do it. You know something that uh, this learning management system, that it's already there in all the schools, by the way. It's not mm. something new. Yes. But the point is that they don't use to you to do it mm. because they're not forced to do it. But actually, it is in the system. Mm. It is in each school. There is called something learning management system, communication between the students and parents and administration, and sending and receiving. All right. But now, when we have to do it, we start to do all. Oh, I have to send an emails first. Okay. Mm. So using emails in the beginning, so wasn't using before COVID-19. And now I'm talking about facing any crisis, not only COVID-19. All right. So we don't know, uh, of course, God forbidden anything that happened to us. But I'm talking about we have to be ready for yes. anything related to the education, which is the basic thing for our kids and our generation. Yeah. They have to learn, to learn in a, a sign way, a scientific way, R&D for research and development. This is the basic thing that we have to start well, from elementary. this is actually what's happening everywhere. And uh, a personal, let me share my personal experience sure. with you. Um, my children are studying in Canada and um, I was surprised to know that uh, all they have to do, first of all, they are not committed to going and leaving uh, school. They are free to go to school or not. And that to me was a surprise because here in Egypt we have the gates and we have yes, yes. the, uh, attendance, the yeah. attendance and everything. <laughs> and, but that meant responsibility at the same time. They have to shoulder the responsibility of attending or not attending. That was number one. Number two, uh, they had some freedom in choosing the topics uh, when it comes to research. They had to choose something that they are really interested yes. in. And they were given the tools on how to look for uh, information. There is, uh, uh, they, they receive like um, data on how to dig for the information they need. Yeah. And third of all, in school, the teacher comes in, he addresses the topic, and they just have to use their computers to dig for information, and he is there, present, to answer their questions as they... they according to the research. According to... Yeah. He is not like uh, spoon-feeding 
exactly. them the information. Yeah. He doesn't go into class, tell them uh, the topic is about one, two, three, and then leaves. No, he's just there. They are doing the, the, the research part and he is interacting with them and helping them on, on how to, to look for the information. So to me, that was, you know, something weird. Strange to, yes. Yeah, in, it's in really weird. Oh my God. Is and that going to happen? I kept asking, what would that happen if, if that was implemented here in Egypt? How would we adapt to it? Uh, actually, you have to, to look for the culture and you have to adopt the, 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 the mindset for accepting that. And you have to make a system in the same time. Yes. So th there are like uh, three parallel lines you have to work in. Um, related to what you're saying, Tess, there is something really integrated subject. Uh, let's say in the States or in Finland or, or in Europe, which is the biggest thing that's in education, they have only like four hours a day or maybe three and a half hours a day for schools and they have two subjects. But look about the integration between the subject itself. Yeah. When I have art, for example, Okay, so it's an art lesson for anyone. But look, when art, talking about um, an, an artist, after the artist, talking about the history of the artist, so mm. that's history, biography, history. And then we can talk about, the oh my God, related mm. people to that art, so that's researching, mm. all right, and geography. And let's come to the writing, your experience related to that, so that's an essay and mm. English. Mm. All right. So after that, we communicate together to make a project similar. And that's, you know, you will find one subject integrated with others. Yes, definitely. So, so there is something related to the curricula that we have to plan for it for now. And we have to put a big part for the projects. Mm. And that the project is really missing in our curricula. Mm. Projects means research, means teamwork, means writing, means communicating. Teamwork is missing, definitely. Exactly. Definitely. So, so, and that's project. Teamwork is missing. I'm a teacher, though, and I have to know exactly. So, I have to decide the teamwork. I have to choose the team leader. I have to know exactly that each one of them doing uh, a particular role in is that. His part, obviously. So, so that's the methodology. Mm. So, we have to to get a methodology, and we have it already. It's not missing. It's there. But it needs to be implemented in there. And actually, uh, um, um, the presidency has been so keen to boost the educational sector and with launching the, um, the knowledge bank, that was again exactly, a breakthrough yeah. Yeah. in encouraging people on researching. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we're Definitely. talking about. So I have to get a background to research. So when I have a bank of knowledge, so I know exactly which is really the trusted place to go in and denote the right information about it. And this really very good step from the Ministry of Education related to that part. Mm. And uh, regardless exactly what they have to do, with the teachers specifically, and they have to, to know exactly, not trained well only, but train and supervise. Mm. Okay, so I'm not only giving training, but I have to follow up. Follow up, yes. What's going on? Is that training effective? How many percentage that the students have been learned from that training? So Again, can we do it in our way? <laughs> Again, this so, is research. And, and that's something that you really needs to be. You make questionnaires, you, uh, you, exactly. you, you do so your... So I have yeah. to know what's going on mm. in that. Mm. And what that about way, innovation, Dr. Jean? What about innovation in education? So um, th this is something that really, um, in all of the world from a long time ago, but we are seeing it clearly right now. Innovation and research and, and technology. And this is something really... Uh, Having been on the earth right now, let's come for the interactive learning. Mm. And, and what means the interactive learning? In? And from the word, we know that interacting. We are interacting. So we send and receiving. Well, and from, again, my personal experience, because I, 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 I went to school in Saudi Arabia at a very early age, and my teachers were American. This is how I, re I learned the English language. We were playing games. We were listening to yep. music. And, and we, we learned how to talk to the teachers and to express ourselves in English without actually knowing the grammatical rules of the English language. So that's the experience. This is how it started. Yeah, that's the experience. And that's normal. In all over the world, you are not strict on what the, the students saying. You are let them exactly have the confidence to speak. 
Mm. Okay, when they have the confidence to speak first, and then by time, they will know exactly what the grammatical word they are using. Yes. And that's what we are doing in the cages, in the earlier, like in the elementary and preschool. So we tell them exactly, oh, we have to communicate with the students mm. by the good language. And then they will learn by experience. And then later on in grade four and five, we'll tell them, oh, that's the present simple and that's the past and that's blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Yes. Okay, so don't, no, need, no need in the beginning to do this. Yes. And that's why you learn quickly. Yes. Because you don't have the feeling of doing this and thinking of what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you just <laughs> said it like that. So well, I hope that uh, the uh, experience would be successful here in Egypt because uh, so many efforts are uh, uh, exerted in order to uh, enhance the educational process. And I think that now everyone is ready to accept changes uh, uh, in that regard. So exactly. Yes, so there, nobody will just going on the field without having the experience and the talent to do that, to improve that sector of talent. Itself. Yes. I'd like to thank you very much, Dr. Uh, you, Jihan yeah. Zahran, uh, innovation education uh, expert and postgraduate uh, professor. Thank you very much for being with Thanks us today. Thanks a lot. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us today in this edition of uh, Women's World. Today we talked about education, innovation, and technology. We hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, till we meet you again next week, it's goodbye. Mm -hmm.